Today, we're diving into Power Windows qualifiers, how each one of them work, and how they can work together to build you a better grade. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here's the image that we're gonna be working with today. And uh, when you first come into the color page, you're always gonna be represented with the primary wheels and then uh, the curves. And we're gonna to refer to these as like the correctors. These are gonna be the things that we manipulate the image with. And there's a couple of different variants of each one. The primary wheels, uh, we also have the log wheels. They do kind of the same thing. They just uh, work a little bit different when it comes to uh, how each one of them overlaps. But we're just gonna stick to primary wheels. The idea here is that we have the bottom end of the signal, the middle uh, area of the signal, and then the high end of the signal. So our shadows, midtones, and highlights. We have the ability to modify them uh, across the whole image. Going into the curves, same sort of thing, just laid out a little bit differently and you interact with the image a little differently. So a lot of people you'll see people do like S curves, adding in more contrast. We're kind of taking the signal, spreading it out a bit. Uh, and then on the curves, we also have the ability of having a bunch of different curves here. As you can see, we have like hue versus hue. And how this works is it's still working across the entire image, but it's going to, uh, work for whatever you have targeted and it'll modify whatever is targeted. So like, let's say we target the blue and in like in her shirt, there's a lot of blue and we can move this up and then we could change what the blue is. Uh, when the blue comes into this corrector here, when it leaves the corrector, how is that blue gonna be modified? And again, this is across the whole image, but in this case, it's just targeting the blue. Um, so the things that we're going to be going into are uh, using these correctors to modify different parts of the image. So currently we have on here a lot of contrast. We'll just throw a lot of contrast, make it really contrasty. A lot of people you'll hear the term like masks uh, in DaVinci. Uh, the things that are going to be similar to that or they're going to work similar are going to be your power windows. And right here are your power windows. And um, you've probably seen like where you can draw a um, an area and that's where that corrector is going to uh, make it or allow its correction. So this particular node, its corrections will only be in the boundaries of this power window. You can also click this button to see those things. And within your power windows, you have the ability to do a couple of different things. Like you can soften out the edges, make it a little lighter. So a lot of times you might see if someone wants to put a vignette on something, let's just restart this. We'll grab an ellipse and we'll bring it out and let, we'll soften it out. That's to soften it. Uh, you can make it uh, more than that, but then you would be able to come in and like, let's say let's darken it and then you can flip it. And then you have a vignette. Obviously, this is a very strong vignette just to you know show you, but you have that ability. Uh, clicking here, you can see now where it's where it's going to be applied, and then where the uh, the applied area is going to start to lessen its effects. So that's kind of how power windows work. Um, they all work kind of along the same premise. You can build. Um, different power windows together. So let's just reset this quick. So here is one of our power windows. We can click another one and now they are working together. Um, and you know, you can then add, you can keep adding them by just clicking. You can add and add and add and add. And there's a couple of different types. Uh, as you can see across the top here, they're also, they're here by default. You can keep adding those in and having them work together or work against each other. But these are kind of how you would uh, pick an area. So let's do something here to make this a little easier is we will take, let's say this, and we'll go around the fire extinguisher, right? And we'll say, okay, for that, and let's go into our hue versus hue, and we will increase this. So now we have a blue fire extinguisher. And the one thing that power windows don't do is they don't move. So as this image moves, you're going to see that it's going to stay. So to combat this, what you can do is you can track each power window individually if you'd like. 
and we click uh, the tracker and then we just have to make sure that we're on window and the current one that's going to track is the one that's selected so this one's currently selected it's the only one we have and then we can start to track that and it'll maintain its position there so now uh, along in this area at least the tracked area we can see that it's tracked to that so that's kind of one way of going about um, using the power windows to really lock in your area because now uh, because we were using the red on that curve if we didn't have this here what you can see is there's a lot more red in the shot um, that would be affected and uh, that would you know keep it just to that area so this uh, power windows enable you to make corrections to different portions of a shot uh, one of those uh, ways now how do you practically use this uh, one of the ways that you could do it is let's say we had something um, set up um, you would be able to just come in and maybe uh, lighten her face up just ever so slightly from the background um, or you know you could flip it around and go the opposite way so that she comes out a little bit I'd probably soften that up and make this a little smaller but you get the idea here is that now you can um, pick particular areas in a shot to um, to modify instead of modifying the whole image it kind of locks off where that corrector is allowed to apply itself to the image uh, one thing that kind of uh, falls short with uh, power windows is when you're making corrections on very uh, precise small things they can sometimes be a struggle because you don't want to sit there and like rotoscope something so like let's say we were to you know rotoscope out her right we don't want to now every time uh, we have a new frame have to continuously modify this now if we were to track this it's going to try to keep its shape but you can see it kind of moves a little bit but we lost our hand so this is like uh, it's adding in a lot of extra work if we want to make sure that all of her skin is going to be the same color or whatever our uh, uh, correction is that it that it gets applied so that's where uh, we would want to use the color data similar like how we were using this uh hues the hues curve where it was taking a particular color data within the image and it was modifying it we can do the same thing for a corrector and almost build like a um a, their mats but we can almost build like a a rotoscope mask that moves based on the color data that's coming into the corrector so to do that that's where uh, qualifiers come in and there's a couple of different versions of the qualifier and how it works I'll go through um, two of them uh, but the others are pretty easy to understand so uh, HSL hue saturation luminance that's just you can pick the color you can pick the saturation level and you can pick the lightness or brightness of a um, of uh, uh, pixels in the shot so so let's pull out that shirt that we had, were initially working with. So to do that, we'll just bring this down. We'll make this smaller. We'll go over to the blues. And we can see now, we, we're, now we're getting just those blues on the shirt. And we can soften it out a little bit. We can see that we have a bit of noise here. And now the reason why we're getting the noise is because when you shoot an image, you're either going to get green or you're going to get chroma noise where you get like the dancing colors, uh, dots. Um, so you're going to get either one of those. There are a couple of different ways you can uh, reduce how concentrated your selection is and you can add in softening. And so it's if things are similar to uh, whatever the left and right colors are, it'll allow those in or it'll add a lesser effect to those. And we can also go in and like, so we just really want this shirt and her hair is really dark. So we could actually just remove all of the... Uh, the dark bits there and try to get rid of some of her hair and we'll soften this out just a little bit so now we're starting to get, remove a lot of that stuff and then uh for the for the letters we can probably uh get rid of those by reduce or getting rid of the high saturation as you can see there we got rid of those so now we just have that just that shirt so now we can go in and we can modify that shirt to fit however we want um you can also if you need to you can uh, 
get you can use the qualifier and you can use the power windows working together so as we can see here we're getting a really good edge here right and as this plays because it's just using the data in the image it's we don't have to worry about tracking or anything like that uh, the to add on top of that is if you were to pick something and it was a couple of different uh, areas so like let's go back to uh, let's let's do the reds because um, I think this will make more sense here. The other thing that you can do while we're picking the reds is I'll show you the automatic ways. If we come down here and we go to qualifiers, now we can select the colors that we want. So like let's say we want the skin, we can select that and now we get the skin. Uh, as you can see, the selection isn't that great because it left out some of the other skin. So what we can do is we can come down here, we can click the uh, positive eyedropper and we can you know now grab that skin but we can see that we're grabbing it a lot of other things that are similar um, one other thing that you can do is when you're picking something if we're on the normal eyedropper is when we click and we can then drag and increase the size of that uh, but once we click again it's going to completely change it um, so that's why the uh, the positive uh, eyedropper is there as well so now we're kind of getting uh, what we want but we're getting a lot of other things in here as well so we might be able to fine tune this to try to get rid of some of the other stuff but let's say that correction on here is great so i'm just going to go real drastic so we can see it but let's say we don't want this chair here now when we play this obviously everything is going to uh, be working perfectly fine we don't have to worry about tracking because everything is just the color data but we can come into our power windows and we can say, okay, I want everything outside of this power window here. So now what we're doing is we're using the qualifier to pick out the different portions that we want. So we don't have to rotoscope like the skin or anything, but then we can use a power window if we have extra selections and say, we don't want that. On the flip side, we can also say, we only want the things that are inside the power window. Right, so maybe we we had, um, so in this case, let's let's act like that's not back there, but maybe the chair and over here, these reflections were there, and we might just want her, um, we'd be able to do that. And then we don't have to worry about the, uh, the corrector uh, being tracked perfectly because it's, it's using, as we can see in here, it's using the qualifier to properly mask out the, that tone that we want. Um, so that's how we kind of use both of them together. And it works out really well. Um, let's come back over to here. The other one that they have is this 3D guy. And this is kind of neat uh, because it allows you to, uh, if like once you, it takes a while to get used to the H, HSL qualifier, but it is extremely powerful. Um, and then learning about all of the um, settings to get rid of some of that noise and to really lock in uh, where that corrector is uh, placed because one of the things that you end up having with the HSL qualifier is if you have a noisy image you um, you pick something and you have a really strong uh, correction with that mass that you have but it's noisy you're going to see like this weird colors dancing and stuff and it just doesn't look that good um, so it takes a little while to get used to this but but once you figure it out, it's extremely powerful. And there's a couple of other tools here to use the eyedropper to like feather it out and stuff. But let's go back over to the 3D. So let's actually use this corrector. I'm just going to throw this on kind of strong so we can actually see this. Or let's make it a different color so it makes more sense. Okay, so what we can do is we can um, just drag this along a, a part portion of the image that we want. And as you can see here, it pulls a color and it's picked that out. Now we have a little bit of extra stuff that we kind of have to work on. So maybe we could uh, go over here to the negative and we could say, okay, we don't want this red here. So now the red's not there. Um, so this is kind of a cool uh, way. Um, I personally don't really use it a lot. Uh, I find the HSL qualifier to kind of work for me. It is something cool because you can pick colors um, and it really uh, makes it 
it easy just to be able to drag over colors and pick them out. But it's still good to understand how to use the matte finesse over here for uh, getting rid of a lot of that noise that you'll get in a shot. So let me actually show you here. Uh, let's reset this and let's come back over here. Let's add in her skin and take a look at that. So now we can see as this dances here, this will be a perfect example to show you what I mean by this. So let's say we want something really strong, right? And as this plays, you can see that it's all dancing. Obviously, that's not what you want. Um, so what we can do is I'm just going to click this so I can actually see it. We could denoise it a little bit and the black or the clean black and clean white. If you know like what a matte is, um, you'll have like the black, which will be the visible bits, and then, or excuse me, the white will be the visible bits, and the black will be the non-visible bits. So we can clean up that. Um, so we're cleaning it up here, and then over here, we can start to clean up and get rid of some of that over there, as you can see, right? And, and as you can see over here, we might have some stuff that we might not want to ever affect. So we could just simply. Um, just make sure that we have her selected in there. So all of those other areas, um, as you can see, now those other areas won't ever be affected. And we can add a little bit of a, of a grade onto her to kind of, uh, you know, brighten her up and make her look a little bit better. Oh, geez. So there, there we go. Now we have added a little bit onto her and it will we don't have to worry about like tracking or anything like that but we are using the power window to make sure that it's not getting like the chair or whatever else it was so this is how we can use all of our correctors but only have them affect certain portions of the frame instead of having it affect the whole frame or everything like let's say that the versus curve everything on the frame that's a certain uh color uh, we can have it just on a particular portion of the image that we might have a problem spot or we want to you know, change the color in some shape or form. Um, being able to go through these and pick you know, a particular color or a particular uh, saturation level. So maybe things are too saturated and you want to take the, uh, the saturation levels of the higher saturated stuff and bring them down. There actually is a curve for that, but you could do it this way. Or like the luminance, um, the stuff that's really bright, you might want to knock that down. Or all the stuff that's on the lower end, you might want to uh, you know, add more saturation in or reduce the saturation. There's also curves for that as well. But this kind of allows you to pick uh, anything in the frame and have any of your correctors just only uh, able to work in that area, if that makes sense. And also note that you don't have to use all of these. You could just use one of them if you wanted to. So if it's uh, just saturation, you could just turn off these and anything that falls in that saturation, which is going to be more, well, in this case, it's everything, but uh, you could have it just work for that little area or down in here, um, you could just have it you know, just working in a particular luminance range, uh, but you do have the ability to pick any of them and use all of your correctors only affecting one little area. And that's kind of the, the power behind using the qualifiers and the power windows uh, you know, together. Qualifiers kind of allow you to pick particular colors or particular values. Uh, and then the power windows allow you to pick particular regions of the image that you wanna add whatever your corrector is. They both work together and they both have strengths that they work very well um, by themselves but uh if you have any questions about qualifiers or power windows you can leave them down in the comments you can also join the facebook group the link is down in the description as well you'll get some help over there from other people that are also using davinci resolve that might be able to inform you on whatever the question is but with that being said my name's jr and thanks for watching